Howdy y'all. I am making a special Wednesday of week five video for us for a couple of reasons. Number one, I want to talk through the mini position paper, your midterm, if you will. Number two, I'm going to give a cheat reference on the specific APA issues I'm seeing with our class, but also because there's a handful of things I want to communicate and I want you to recognize that I am truly coming from a place of authenticity and trying to genuinely role model my DI philosophy and some of the things that I'm going to say are a little critical, a little pointed. So I'm including my video so you see that I'm not saying any of this with a nasty face or snarky. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. But we've got some stuff we need to work on. Okay? So with that said, week five. Midterm mini position paper. Compile, combine, three reflection papers into one academic APA formatted paper. Okay. That doesn't mean just copy and paste and you're done. Think about us as a class. Think about differentiated instruction, multicultural, multi-ability classrooms. Some of us are naturally gifted writers. Some of us have worked very hard to be good writers. Some of us have worked very hard to be okay writers. And some of us struggle with writing. The point of being able to craft your own position paper was not to test your writing acumen. So by chunking it into three bits, you had the opportunity to gently start working on having a position on how you feel about DI and how you feel it's relevant and what it is and all that. And you got feedback on your writing each step of the way. So by chunking out the assignment into a more formative fashion, it allowed you to get feedback on where you were being successful and where you needed more focus. It allowed me to help steer you in the right direction if you were going off somewhere that really wasn't serving you and the intention of this learning in a way that it didn't destroy your grade. It didn't, I didn't let you get too far or too deep into the class without having guidance and structure, but flexibility within that guidance and, stru and structure. I've had a couple people tweak their mini position papers because they were off target, okay? Chunking out big, formally assessed work this way is one of the ways that I live my DI philosophy, okay? So let's look at this paper. Inside assignments. Now, there's a lot of information here. Please read it. It's not here just to make the shell look big and impressive or scary for boating, depending on your perspective. I'm finding a lot of people aren't reading. Um, and I know we're all busy adults. Which is why I've been making so many videos. I don't always make videos week after week for every class. Uh, the students who've had me before can attest to that. But I've been doing that consistently in this class for, you know, several different reasons. One of which is I don't want to have to beat people up, but it's pretty clear that there are a handful of people who are not reading. And this is the master's level, guys. You got to read the directions. Directions are not for skimming. Big, ridiculously dry articles are for skimming. Read the beginning, skim the middle, read the end. Okay. Big, long $500 books. Okay. Not directions. Okay. And I'm not just telling you that for this class, but 632 and 634. All right. So let's look at the rubric. 
And again, let's be very clear. The rubric is not just a mechanism for your professor to grade your work. It's your guide. It gives you freedom. There is freedom within the structure because you don't have to guess what has to be in this paper for me to succeed. It's one of the things that drives me insane with writing assignments where there is no rubric. Well, how do I know what you need to have in this paper? I can't read your mind. You don't have to read my mind. It's all here. And this rubric is for the most part a melding of your previous rubrics. So it should all look fairly familiar, but it is more detailed. All right, so please go through every single one of these in exemplary. I mean, I don't even want you to look at proficient developing and emerging because I don't want you to get that. I want you to rock this work in a way that you have truly earned exemplary. And I'm going to be very strict about this because you've had so much feedback, formative feedback, moving to this point. It is what it is. So you've got introduction and rationale for differentiated instruction. Notice what needs to be in the paper. Clearly, identifiably, make sure this is in there. All right. Note here, I'm looking for the citing of three sources dealing with your theoretical framework, blah, blah, blah. Stuff from the course. Authors, articles, or books, videos of authors, of speakers, of theorists, of practitioners. Three. We've had a lot more than three at this point in the class. So this shouldn't be something that worries you. You just need to go back and look and think, who did you really like? And again, you've had three mini papers by now. You should have this. All right. So let's move down. Uh, the next section cuts across the papers. Exploring issues. You see exactly what is being asked. Plan for addressing diversity concerns. And then we get to the writing and the organization. All right, paper includes all required components. What are the required components? A title page, an introduction and rationale, exploring issues, plan for addressing diversity and concerns, and references. That right there, I've broken out a structure for you. So you're not like, oh, I don't know. It's here. Rubrics are not being read very carefully, okay? And that's dangerous for a student, but we're teachers. That's even kind of scarier. I won't go there, but just think about that for a minute from a kind of a third-person perspective. Come on, guys. Uh, okay, current APA citations, guiding guidelines, word choice. It needs to be well-written. No grammar, spelling, or punctuation issues. If you have issues with grammar or syntax, after you write your paper, record yourself reading it and listen to yourself. Does something strike you odd? I do this myself, guys. When I'm writing big, scary, formal papers to journals that I have no rhyme or reason trying to get my work published in, um, it's what you got to do. This is master's level work, right? If it was easy, everybody would have one. It requires extra work, extra effort, because it's worth it. I promise you it is. You can do this. So use the rubric. Now, let's get specific with our course, our class. What are the APA issues I'm seeing? One of the biggest issues I see consistently is the issue of capping titles on the reference page, on the reference section. It doesn't have to be a page, it can be a section. Although in a formal paper, you're probably gonna to wanna to be a page, but either way. So, references. Just saying. All right. So, first of all, like the rest of your paper, 
it needs to be double spaced. Plain old, good old fashioned, double spaced. Double spaced, Microsoft Word, double spaced. Make sure, guys, spacing before and after is zero points. A lot of people miss this, and then you get some weird extra demi space in between paragraphs. Everything in an APA paper. Clean, clean, double space. Go on down, okay? So, the capping. Always we do the last name of the author, right? Oh, this is not bolded. Goodness, that would be setting a bad precedent now, wouldn't it? Last name, comma, first initial period. If there are two first initials, space in between the initials. If there are two authors, I need a comma and an ampersand and then the name of the other author. Year. I'm projecting. GL is my kid. Um, I'm sure he's going to be writing all kinds of formal papers. Title capping. Only the first word. Any proper nouns. The first word of a subheader. I don't care how it's printed on the book cover. I don't care how it's printed on the article. I don't care what it looks like on the website. The rules for titles are clean and clear. First word, proper nouns, first word of a subheader. So, uh, my life as a professor. The real story. Okay? Even though, let's say this is a book, and in the book, life was capitalized, professor was capitalized, story was capital. I don't care. The rules are clear. First word, any proper noun, first word of a subheader. That's it. Period. Same for a journal, same for a website, same for a book. Now, let's say this is a book. These are the easy ones. If it's a book... I italicize the title of the book. If it's a journal article, I do not. If it's a journal article, I will put the title of the journal. If it's from a magazine, Newsweek, People, please don't anybody say People, uh, National Enquirer, that's what gets the italics. So let's say this is in the uh, journal, and you write the journal the way it is presented. Um, journal of awesome stuff, period. Oh, wait, there's a volume and an issue number. Comma. Volume number four, issue number three. What gets italicized is the name of the journal and the volume number, not the issue number. Oh, wait a minute. There's a problem here. Every reference, the first line is flush left, and any additional lines get an indent. And Microsoft is going to make this annoying for you because that's what Microsoft does well. So you do it yourself. Do you see what I did there? The bottom one moves the next line. All right. Are there page numbers of this? If there are, I simply do a comma. Let's see. This is pages 44 through 47. Now I'm done. No P. No PP. P and PP come later when you're doing sections of a book and you're getting really hardcore with your APA. This is basic stuff, guys, okay? I'm almost done. Hang in there. Did I retrieve this online? If I did, and then the URL. That right there, what I've just done, guys, that covers the biggest issues I've seen in our class.